Hey, Josh, I got a dollar. Guess what, Joe? I got a dollar, too. What should we do? What would May May do? Yeah, what would she do? Decorate. I got a dollar. I got a dollar. I got a dollar. Hey, 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 hey. Hey guys, it's May May again, and tonight I'm doing another dollar decorating idea, and it is for your Thanksgiving buffet or your Thanksgiving table, wherever you spread your food out for everybody. We always tend to have a lot of people bring different foods, and we may not know what they are, like if Aunt Dottie brought pumpkin souffle and say Mom brought sweet potato casserole, sometimes you can't really tell those apart. So... I'm going to show you a way tonight to kind of tell those apart. It's really fun. You don't need a whole lot of stuff. The first thing and the most important thing is one of these guys. This is one of those dollar pumpkins. Now, this one has a little glittery stuff on it, and I didn't use this kind. I used the one that was smooth, but I ran out of those to show you, so I'm just going to use this one as an example for right now. I wouldn't use this one for this, and you'll see why later, but um, we'll do something else with this in another project. But you do need one of these dollar pumpkins, and then you're going to need... Well, let's don't go there. Then you're going to need two punches. You can pick your punches. When I show you what we're going to do with them, it doesn't matter what you pick. Just whatever you like. And so I'm using a two-inch scallop punch and a one-and-three-quarter-inch circle punch. Um, this one is from... Don't remember. I think Paper Studio. And then this one is close to my heart. I do know that. You're going to need kind of a junk brush, something that you can mess up and not use again. You're going to need some white paint. Just um, I used acrylic paint. You'll need two pieces of paper to use in your punches, so cut to the right size for your punch. You will need a T-pin or something similar. When we get started, you can decide if you have something that'll work the same, but I'm using a T-pin because I had to buy some of these for a project recently and I had some, so this is what I'm using. And then some glitter, and you can pick your colors. Now, because of the amount of um, glitter we're going to use, first off, let me say this. I don't like loose glitter. That's why I'm using this. It's already wet glitter. If you want to use glue and then sprinkle glitter, you're more than welcome to, but that's not my favorite thing, so that's why I'm using these bottle glitters. And these are from Close to My Heart. These are Glitz. Um, this is Stardust, and this is Bronze, so you can use that kind of thing if you want to. All right. First things first, you're going to want... Ugh, mine's just a little wet. You're going to want to paint your pumpkin, okay? And I'm going to try to show you this. This is that same pumpkin that didn't have the glitter on it, and it was orange. Now, this side has one coat, and I don't know if you can tell it or not on camera, but you can still see some of the orange through this side. Now, on the other side, I went ahead and did two coats so you can see the difference in how, how white that is. So, if I go here, maybe you can tell the difference, but right here, there's orange showing. Right here, there's not. So, you want to make sure you get a good opaque coverage. And again, this is just one of those styrofoam pumpkins, so I'm going to set this aside for now. Now, that was to show you the two different kinds. Now, this is the pumpkin I'm going to use for this project tonight, and it has two full white layers on it. And I want to show you, the bottom doesn't look real good, but we don't really care because it's not going to show. But I sit my stuff on wax paper to dry, and so that's why it that looks like that, but it's not going to show we're going to use it facing down. Also, I took the stem out so I could get a really good paint job, and so I'm going to hot glue my stem back in instead of... Um, gosh, instead of fighting with it. So I'm just going to hot glue this back in just a second. But first, let's do the next part of the project. For this pumpkin, I'm going to use this Stardust Glitter. And what I'm going to do, I've painted two full matte coats of paint on this pumpkin. And this idea came from, um, I had my niece, we had my niece's third birthday party, and I made her a pumpkin carriage. And I did this to the pumpkin carriage to kind of dress it up. And I thought, that is so pretty on top. So what you're going to do is just kind of where those indentions are on your pumpkin, just run some glitter or glue, depending on what you're going to use. It's completely up to you. Then take your brush that you don't mind messing up, and you're just going to brush it. And you want a pretty good coat of it in the center. You kind of want to circle that middle. okay? And as you go down, you want to pull it down in those creases and just kind of lay it out. And it kind of makes it look like it's got like, you know, like it's been in the garden and it's got kind of morning dew or whatever on it. It just kind of looks all glistening and pretty. And this little pumpkin had a little um, damage spot on it. I got it at Target for 40 cents, so it didn't bother me too much because I knew I was going to do something with it. Now, you decide how much glitter 
See, I'm going back and I'm kind of dry brushing glitter in the middle of those streaks. And you decide how much glitter you want. If you want to glitter the whole pumpkin, by all means, glitter it. I just think that is so pretty. And if it's sitting somewhere where the light catches it on that top, it's going to be so pretty. So you can see kind of where the glitter is and where the glitter goes away. And you go into that mat. Now, again, if you want to pull this down more, go right ahead. If you want to add more glitter, and I'm going to do that on my next pumpkin. I'll show you how that's going to work. You can do that as well. So I'm just going to smear some of this down a little bit more and sit this on the side to dry. And I want to work on the other pumpkin with you. Now again, ideally, I would have done two full coats on this one, but since I didn't, I'm going to use a different glitter. And I'm going to use my same brush because I said, one, you don't care if you mess up, okay? And on this one, I'm going to be heavier handed with a darker color. So here, I'm going to really load the glitter up because I plan on almost turning this one into a different shade altogether. And if it does, I'm okay with that. Look how cool that looks. Much heavier. And I'm not being specific on this one because I like the, the color, the um, contrast. I think this would be really pretty if you had orange. I didn't have any orange glitter. And I didn't want to use my stickles because, you know, they're a little more expensive. So, okay. Now, I really think... I want to dry brush this almost to where you cannot see any white. I'm just going to keep pulling it down. And this color is called copper, so it's really pretty for the pumpkin. It, probably, it may not show up good on camera, but this copper color is real pretty. Get in there. And so easy. Now look, this is literally something your kids can do. I mean, they can't mess this up. They just cannot. Kind of looks like a salted and peppered one, but it's really pretty when you can see the sparkle. I don't know if that's showing up as good on camera. But use any color of glitter you have and something that you like. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to let those set aside to dry. And this is where we're going to bring our punches in. Now, I have two colors. I have a light color and a dark color. And the light color is the one I'm going to use as the inside of my punch. So I'm going to use my one and three quarter. And I need to flip this over so I can see. Use the one and three quarter to make my circle there. And then I want this darker color to be my two inch scallop. Just bring that in there. So now, oops. So now I have both pieces. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a little sign so everybody knows what's on the table. Let me get some of that glitter off. And what I like to do is go ahead and put some, if you want to put dash lines, just put dash lines. And I don't care if it looks kind of sloppy because I want it to look like it came kind of out of the garden, kind of like a country garden. So if you just want to do dash lines, that, that's fine. I'll show you something else I did on the other one. Look how sloppy. It's still going to be cute. And now what you do is you, and I'm using my ATG just because it's fast and easy. You want to make sure you get a couple of strips of ATG in the center, you know, kind of in the center of that bottom one. And then run two or three on the top piece. And remember, this is kind of temporary because it's kind of for your table, so you won't really save this forever. So it won't really matter if they're not permanent forever. Place your T-pin into your ATG adhesive, and then make sure all your other adhesive isn't showing. And then you want to kind of make a little T-pin lollipop. And so that's what you get, okay? Now what I've done with my other one, and this is what I was showing you we're gonna use this for, I think this is so cute, is on this one I wrote sweet taters. <laughs> If you can see that. We call them sweet taters in Alabama, so there's that, sweet taters. And then these, you'll make up several of these, and when people arrive, you'll already have these made up, and they can write what they're bringing. So let's say I have sweet taters, and somebody else brings pecan pie. And I want to know something. We have a debate in our house. Do you say pecan, or do you say pecan? So we say pecan, or I say pecan. My son likes to drive me insane and say pecan. He loves to do that, so thank you, Jared. 
and I'm just doing some little dotting. And look, let the people write it themselves and get their, you know, get their handwriting on it. That'll be key. Now then, let's go back to the pumpkins. I'm going to bring this one back in. And I'm going to hot glue my little um, topper back on. So I'm going to put a dollop in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's just going to hold that little piece back in. Then place my stem back inside. Let that sit for a second. Okay, then find the side you like best. Well, I like this side. Pick what dinner or what um, casserole or whatever dish you're going to have this sitting by. And then... Decide which side you want to put your sign on. I like this side. And because these are styrofoam, just poke that right in. See how cute that is? It's a little sign sticking out. So you have that one. And let's go ahead and do the pecan pie one. See, I did it just to be funny. Okay, pecans. Maybe one that, well, I like where this one is on this side. So we'll stick it right there. And then pecan pie. And now when it's time to sit all your stuff around, you're going to sit these beside the dishes so that they just look clean and, you know, it looks really cute for your guests and it's just something different. But go ahead and make up several pumpkins and several of the little tags so that when it comes time for lunch, you'll have these ready when people show up with their dishes. Um, you could add a bow or ribbon or whatever, whatever you want to add. These are just really to serve a little purpose that we tend to run into. Like, oh, what is this? What is this? And you have a lot of people over and they don't know. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Dollar decorating. I probably don't have, this was 40 cents. This was a dollar. And then white paint, I don't know, probably two or three bucks um, in both of these. So you could do these really cheap. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. And hopefully we'll have a few more of these before the holidays. Thanks for watching. And for more dollar decorating, visit MayMayMadeIt.com. Hey guys, can I borrow a dollar?